so the question I've been asked constantly is how I got to rank 14. What happened, right? And the short answer is it's not because of temporal vortex. It is because other world exploration ain't few biggest whales quitting the game. So once you unlock Otherworld Exploration, you will be gaining exploration progress experience in different ways. You can get it through completing daily quests and you should. You should complete these quests unless you can hit more bosses with 25 million damage. And I'll explain that shortly. But even for me at this point, I am still doing that. It's 3600 experience here per day on top of all these expo oh, in-depth exploration, I, I call them achievement quests. Once you do them, you can get quite a lot of experience and your alliance matter as well, right? This will be a good boost of the experience, but it is not the most important one. So for the first few days, once you hit these milestones and you will start slow, okay? You will start slow depending on how many teams you prepared. But yes, you will start slow, but as you can see, we can get 6,000 Echo of Clepsydra here, right? 6,000 from the first tier. That's a lot. And everyone will get that, okay? Everyone will walk through these tiers depending on how much experience you can get by per day. You might get it faster, you might get it slower than others, but you will get through that. And there's a lot of it. I mean, look at these numbers. There's a lot of this Clepsydra, but everyone is getting that. That's right. Everyone will. So the guys that are in the same rank as you they will as well sooner or later but what is the most important thing here is this exploration progress cycling rewards these happen every 40k experience every 40k experience they will reset and you have a chance to get 12,000 echo of clepsydra all over again so that's why you can see the top players constantly building teams for Chaos Shadows. Chaos Shadows can reward you with up to two and a half thousand points compared to any other content in the game. If you do this quest here, it gives you only a hundred experience per 10 tonic with a quest equals to 1300. So you get double that from the boss that you can do 22 million on. Obviously, during our first season, we won't be able to do it with 15 teams. We won't be able to do it with 12. Even 10 is hard. I'm still not there. But you should, and you should work on it, to definitely do at least 5. So you will have this 12,000 uh, experience here, right? 12,500 just from that, plus everything else. And it, it's up. I mean, the maximum experience, if you just do 15 of those, is, right, that's 37,500 experience per day. And those guys who have play, played season zero and season one, they have like 12 teams to do it daily, right? And this is why it's so important. Look at this. Almost every day, you will be getting 12,000 Chaos Clepsydra. But let's forget about this number, okay? Let's say you're in similar boat as me, you can get it every second day, right? So every second day, I can get 12,000 Chaos Clepsydra points. Now, do you know how much a rank one in Temporal Vortex get? He gets 500. So he needs 24 days to get the same amount of points I can get every second day. But obviously he's doing that, he's doing that. But it again shows you the first 24 days on the temporal vortex, if someone is rank one, right? It takes him 24 days to get these 12,000 points, which we will eventually get through this. So this is a best way to catch up and I'll show you what I'm doing right now. These are my teams that built to deal with it, to get as far as possible and as quickly as possible, get as many points here I can. So right now I'm getting 17 
and a half thousand experience per day just from the bosses and I've been farming Goblin Dungeon constantly for over a week now. So Jafalia is the boss that I do with my main um, rally team and as you can see here green means the skills on the hero are maxed out, red means they are not touched and orange means they are partially done which means usually um, it means usually that the skills are 100% to apply. I only go for the chance on the skills. Uh, and this spreadsheet is available on my Discord, by the way. I'm going to update it today. At the end of the day, I'll post a new one. Uh, so this is the teams that work for me. Obviously, I won't go over the equipment on those. I'll prepare a separate like video for equipment and the formation and how to use these teams. But this is something that I would suggest everyone to do. And I mean, this doesn't take long to create. I mean, this is a simple uh, spreadsheet, right? And yeah, Jafalia with my main rally team and Aura that I'm using. So yeah, 25 million. This is the highest I've done. Eric, uh, as you can see, there's barely any damage dealer. Those guys are actually rotating the attack down because my Lydia and Quarion are struggling to stay alive. A Falivor without skills, he is the main damage dealer here and he can get this team to 27 million. Oster, I think Oster is one of the easiest if you have good uh, wild team, especially two wild teams like me. And I can do 25 million with Isolde as a tank, rush with no skills and my, you, my old main uh, wild team with defense aura coming from Isolde because uh, no one else here have any auras. And then Ripekas. Ripekas is not hard, but he's random. If you need to build a resistance on your front line, and yeah, I struggled to get to the 22 million before uh, I got the organ artifact. With organ artifact, I can do it easily now. I'm between 23 and 24. Horus, he doesn't need skills. Uh, Hexandra and Horus at the front line, obviously the ones that we have early on in the game, and they work wonders there. Sigrid and Ally build around the damage. There's no one to apply poison, so Eli is losing a little bit. But we got Letalis to slow down Ripeka's constant buffs. I mean, he is slow down with ultimate recovery. We still his ultimate basically making him uh, go to the certain stack uh, later. And this allows us to survive because the issue is frontline eventually dies and everything falls. Falandor is the one that I had the most struggles with because if you've been following me then you know that my eyes and my necro team sucks uh, so i had to think of something and obviously i was lucky to get ripekas recently and he helps with this because uh he can steal the ultimate energy and he can apply um recharge speed recoveries as well so this can delay this rally uh, sometimes it's random because he's not skilled, obviously. But if we manage to delay Rally on the ultimate, it'll help us to survive. And it was very hard to get to 22 million. But again, I put Hourglass on Adri and Organs on Joyce. And the damage just went through the roof and it's constant 22, 23 millions now. If I really wanted to push this team, I could upgrade Joyce and Zalox uh, uh, skills to boost the damage. But there's no need. I'm hitting that 23 ma million mark so I can save my scrolls for another team. Yeah, and then we move down my second Oster team, right? 22 million easily. I had issues with Elvis surviving. And as you, as you can see, there's no affinity, five man affinity bonus because I don't have another source of healing for the fire team. So I went with spares, basically. My sixth team was what I could use for Philander, but I failed at 11 million on Philander, so I used that instead on Oster and added my new um, Wild Heroes. So I've put Scar up on Elvis today and I was able to do 22 million on my first try. So tomorrow I'll save that equipment and try a few more times, see how uh, easy it is to get this 22 million. Uh, so yeah, Elvis, Kaspar, no skills, Felicity, I'm using the same Felicity I'm using on my wild team right now, so she is here to apply this defense down and stuff, Kaspar does a lot of damage as well, Dane for the attack down, and Elvis, because he slows down Oster. Elvis and Jillian are built around with resistance, which really helps, because uh, Oster does not get any uh, extra ultimate uh, 
points recovered. So I'm slowing down Elvis. He doesn't cast as much as he could. And this helps me to get over 22 million. Now, another team that does the job and gets still more than the domain. Domains give you 500. So it's important to do more than 7 million. I'm getting 1.2k here. And I'm using through buff. As you can see, I could move through buff to Ulster and stuff, but I will still lose the affinity. So I prefer, since I already hit two and a half million mark here, I prefer to work on this team. And through buff and Garyan, there's no much, there's no much burst healing, but they, these guys work, stay alive. The problem here is why it's only 11 million is because I don't have anyone to slow slow down the ultimate, and my Vikana and Corin don't have skills maxed out. I think Corin might be replaced with, uh, what's his name, Durango eventually and move Girion to the backline, so it might be might, it might help me to survive a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, Vikana, the issue is her ultimate is, has a longer cooldown now, so she can't really use it at the right time and those guys follow, because they have, then she has a very, very short cooldown with this. So yeah, something I need to work on, but I don't think I'll get 22 million on Ripekas, he's already kind of RNG boss but Eric I uh, decided I'm gonna go rare epic against Eric sadly I don't have Nathaniel Nathaniel will work amazingly here I don't have like Shagrol and stuff so I had to go for Vani and Hawk as my damage dealers and obviously I'll re I will do the video and show you guys all these heroes in action instead of just names on the spreadsheet but I'm using Shook to uh, apply recharge speed penalty and steal energy as well as attack penalty Wolfhook attack penalty as well, right? So that's why these two guys are having the skills to ensure we have this 100% chance to apply this. And I believe this team can easily get to 22 million once I fix the issue with Ihukalto. She is uh, dying. She is the first one to fall. And if she falls, the team crumbles because then Eric is casting on Vanya and Hulk. So that's why I need to work on. If I fix this issue here in the notes, then I can definitely push for 22 because these, these two guys do a lot of damage together. And then my new Oster team, I'm expecting it to do 11 million as well. As you could see in the camp today, uh, Neda and Alfie already do a lot of damage. Imra is the one that will be applying attack penalty through her ultimate. So, you know, she's got partially uh, max skills and she will use Clepsidra as well uh, to make sure she can cast it before the ultimate and Neda will have her skills maxed out um, sadly Alfie and Foley which name has been changed to Refi uh, don't and they will not because I'm really struggling with this purple scrolls and Kaledo, Kaledo is a radiant hero that is a melee and he's kind of a healer not many people use him but i use him in the fire domain early on and i can definitely use him here because the issue is i don't have any other healer i can use meredith that's right i can use meredith but meredith will be ready for another team that i will be working on if i got time i'm not sure if the bosses will disappear if not then i will be working on uh, Jafalia team with my second Radiant team basically. I can still build a really good Radiant team without those heroes. Uh, but yeah, this is basically what I'm doing right now. And as, as I said, 17.4 thousand uh, experience here gets me to like 23 or 4 thousand with everything else. So every second day I'm getting 12 thousand uh, Echo of Clepsidra and I am basically speeding my rank here. I'm constantly rank 17, 14. Uh, and as I said, the temporal vortex at this stage does not matter. It's 500 points a day. We got only 17 left, right? So as you can see, that is barely a couple thousand that we can get here, right? So 5,000, yeah. So what is it, uh, like eight and a half thousand points? So it's not worth it. I mean, I can get 6k here through the other world exploration. So definitely this is what you should be doing at the end uh, of the season, farming that. And then there's another thing that I will cover in five days, Resurgence of the Dragon. We will see what that does, what it means and how much of this Echo of Clepsidra we can still keep getting. Because this is like 
The first 60 days of the season were a marathon and now we are sprinting to get over the finish line basically. And yeah, so tell me how you're doing, okay? Tell me how many teams you've built because I know there's people who have so many good teams and yeah, good luck. <laughs> good luck with your seasonal journey. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please click the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. As always, thank you for watching. Stay safe. Bye.